and medium enterprises to corporate responsibility. So, to begin, I want you to present you a rhinoceros beetle. Did you know this insect is, can lift something 850 times of its own weight? Well, this is only one example of the power of small things in the world. But in business world, small things have a great power too. So that's why SMEs uh, represent 90% of the business worldwide. They account for 50% of the global GDP. And besides, they employ six, between 60 to 70% of the world population. Uh, but small and medium enterprises can be even more powerful in using CR. That's why we focus our project in CR and SMEs to develop a tool specifically suited for, for SMEs uh, that can help them to implement and improve CR processes to communicate them and by doing so create a real competitive advantage. Uh, but before we do more, Martha is going to give you a quick overview about the presentation. These are the contents that we are going to cover in our presentation. First, we are going to explain the file for the project, then the how, where we will identify the steps that we have to do in the elaboration of our project, and finally, the result of the that this is the tool that we have created for SMEs. Okay, so let's begin. Let's start with the first step. Let's start with the first step. Let's start with the first step. And the traditional model in which business exists only to generate profit has changed. If they want to remain profitable, they are expected to get involved in addressing the issues facing the society they need to serve. Can this change is harvest in a new global context that is characterized by the following aspects? Globalization has had an effect on SMEs in too many ways. On one hand, it has created new possibilities of interaction, and on the other hand, it has allowed them to operate on a global scale. As a result, the number of micro multinationals, which are SMEs that operate in more than one country, has considerably grown over the last year. And in this context of global interconnection, the role of communication technology and social media has been crucial. And given the fact that SMEs have limited resources compared to big corporations, it should be mentioned the significant opportunity that SMEs offer, that communication technologies offer for SMEs as, as a way to make their actions more visible. As a consequence, stakeholders are more informed than ever and they expect business to make a positive contribution to society. And this allows companies to create closer relationships with them and improve them in terms of responsible behavior. Furthermore, there has been an emergence of combat guidance and declarations for acceptable corporate conduct, and public sector pressure could be seen as a way to improve those behaviors. For instance, in Spain, the event of a combat has been a program to help with vehicle, which aims to encourage SMEs to develop corporate volunteer programs. As Anna has mentioned before, the role that SMEs play in the world economy is crucial. However, they present the following challenges when developing CR. They, they have limited financial and technical resources. There is a strong prejudice that CR is for being multinational. They have a lack of strategic visions, and as a consequence, they don't know how to prevent CR into the core business. Nevertheless, they also present the following opportunities. They have a better knowledge of local resources, and they are aware of the needs and problems of the communities. SMEs have more efficient ways and are seen as a source of innovation and uh, they, are high, they, they are highly adapted to changes. Furthermore, through a contact who works for the West Colombia, we contact with the Spanish, which is a communication agency that is looking to Spanish consulting services. And we have some conversation with them, and this conversation made us aware of the need to be tattooed for SMEs to make their actions in CSR more, more visible and to, to, to help them to incorporate those measures. So what? In order to create a tool for InfoPress, we have researched the current stage of CR in SMEs, analyzing what kind of guidelines could support them to implement those measures. And during this process, we have focused on the importance of goal setting when assessing a CR strategy, how, measures, how SMEs can measure the social impact of the performance indicators, the role that communication technology, the, the role that international CR plays, and the importance of communication and reward. So, having a clear strategy and a goal in mind is essential for any SME in order to take advantage of the CR strategy. And this is why there's a variety of different theories or different um, guidelines to help companies set their CR strategy. And one of the oldest and probably most known um, concept is Carol CSR Pyramid. And this pyramid aims to help businesses to identify what kind of responsibilities they took, should take into consideration when, having, or when building up a CR strategy. So as you can see here, it starts with the economic responsibilities, 
followed by the legal, ethical, and philanthropic responsibilities. And we think this is especially good for SMEs to have a broad idea of what they could include into their CR strategy. However, we think that there are more detailed concepts that might be more useful for SMEs. So now we want to take a closer look at the DNA model of CSR 2.0, which is a little bit more modern and it has a more holistic approach. So as you can see here, the idea is that different DNA codes are implemented really into the core business of this company and each of these codes is connected to a goal and also to certain key indicators which aim to give SMEs or any businesses a really clear idea of what they should do and what kind of goal they can reach with their strategy. However, there's also uh, another um, idea which is probably not so much known, maybe in our class. <laughs> this is the four waves of sustainable business, a concept that was established by the International Business Leaders Forum. And the idea here is that um, there are four waves of sustainable business. And each of these waves, going from philanthropy up to healthy business environment, is linked with a purpose, then goes over strategy and stuff and so on. So you can see that they're really trying to have different characteristics for the different waves of responsible behavior. Presenting all of these tools, you can see that they are quite different, but again, they're also a little bit similar in some ways. And we think that, especially for SMEs, it's important to not just take one of these tools into consideration, but to actually look at their core business and what kind of things they could include into their CR strategy with their own business strategy. So we want to give you an example of Fearless, which is an organic, trade, uh, organic chocolate company, an SME, that has a really strong sustainable strategy. By screening their suppliers really carefully, they're not only protecting the environment, but they're also trying to implement their good governance and a really strong leadership throughout their whole supply chain. Furthermore, they're actually listening to their, cons to their consumers. So they're trying to um, have chocolate bars for people with food sensitivities. And with each chocolate bar sold, they're also investing in community projects. But however, having all of these sustainable strategies, they always know that they have to keep their economic growth in mind. So as you can see here, this is the first step for a CR strategy to actually have a goal and think about what kind of strategy you can have. However, just having a strategy is not enough because all of these actions should also be measured. And this is what Anna is going to talk about. Talking about measuring and indicators, we have to say that defining materiality is really important in doing CR, and especially especially for SMEs, but because it can help them to focus their efforts. So SMEs need to focus first on the organizational objectives in the relevant aspects of their CR strategy and in those important issues that are related to the natures of the business. It's also important to take into account the context in which the company operates and to relate all these issues with the stakeholders. So here we have a, an example of a materiality matrix of one tiny billion cups that is an SME. What they did was relate the, the issues between the importance for the business success, success and the importance to stakeholders. And these global sizes represent uh, the importance of, of, this, of these issues in a global scale. And so the next step will be to define key performance indicators for each material aspect. So these are financial and non-financial metrics that can help companies uh, define their progress to towards the organizational goals. Uh, they can be quantitative or qualitative and they must apply the SMART approach that is here. This is another example of an SME that is not only defining KPIs, but also showing their progress in a real transparent way and through a report uh, that's more attractive than other ones. Um, but to help SMEs in all these processes, we also analyze the guidelines that may be useful for them. So here is the Sigma project. This is some management of five different types of capital uh, that relates that are related with the, the overall impact of the company and take into account the accountability principle. Um, it's useful for SMEs because it also creates a management framework that, uh, that helps them to be implemented. It can be implemented according to the level of development of the CR strategy <coughs> of each SME. Um, another guideline is the sustainability mix that 
it's created by Poetica. What they did is create four scenarios where the initiatives in CR happens. The workplace, the marketplace, the environment, and the community. And then relate them um, in if they are promoting or improving leadership, dialogue, management, or transparency. So this is also useful for SMEs <coughs> because allows them to, to have a general picture of what they have to assess to when doing CR. Um, Foretica also analyzed uh, the performance of some of their clients. So this uh, chart here uh, shows how some of their clients, when they are beginning doing CR, CR for example, uh, try to assess more leadership initiatives, while the ones that have more experience um, focus more on the dialogue with the stakeholders, for example. And this other guideline is the social return on investment. Uh, we have this quote because we really think the opposite of it. Um, this guideline really tries to count what it can be, what it's difficult to be counted. Uh, because it brings not only qualitative and quantitative information, but also the financial information. So this is really useful for SMEs because can help them to analyze the investment they are doing in CR. Okay. So now that we know how to um, yeah, have an idea about key performance indicators, we also know that a lot of SMEs especially have troubles of how to actually report these KPIs, like first assess them, but also to report them to external stakeholders. And this is why there's a variety of international standards, and um, all of them differ a lot in their scope and the issues addressed. And we have only focused on a few of them. <laughs> Um, so here you can see, first of all, the normative frameworks, such as the UN Global Compact or the OECD guidelines. And all of these, gu all of these frameworks um, do give companies a, a guideline of what they should address and how they can communicate to their stakeholders. However, we believe that this might not be perfect for SMEs, because all of these guidelines were initially implemented for multinational companies. However, as Martha told us before, um, these guidelines are now, these frameworks are now trying to adapt their framework more to SMEs. So we think SMEs can have a look at them, but maybe it's not the perfect way of how to report this. Then we have the generally accepted standards for sustainability, um, such as the Global Reporting Initiative and the Accountability Standards. And we think that these kind of accepted standards can be useful for SMEs once they're actually aware of what they're doing and once they have implemented their CR strategy. Because as we know, these kind of standards have certain principles that someone should or that a company should adhere to. However, it can be hard for an SME who has no idea about CR to use one of these standards. Um, furthermore, there are also a variety of certifications in place. As you know, many ISO standards, Fair Trade, or the Marine Stewardship Council, just to name some of them. Um, and we want to give you one example of FollowFish. FollowFish is a German small enterprise which tries to promote sustainable fishing in their products. And you can see that FollowFish is using the Marine Stewardship Council on their packaging. And we had a quite interesting conversation with the CEO of Polarfish, um, just asking him, okay, what he thinks about certifications um, for small and medium enterprises. And he said that in the beginning they were not really sure if they should use a certificate or not, but in the end they decided that it's very important to give consumers um, a high credibility or like through a certification. However, he also says that someone has to be careful because sometimes the certificate is just used as a badge of approval and companies are not really integrating sustainability into their management. So this is why he says, yes, you should use them, but be careful what you're using and why you're using them. And this is also our conclusion with all of these different international standards. We say that they can be really helpful for SMEs, but they have to be careful and have to really look at them if it's the right step when to use them. And all of these standards are a way of communicating um, your sustainability program externally. However, as we said, they're not always useful or just up in a certain stage they're useful for SMEs. And this is why Anna is now going to talk to you about um, communication for us. Okay, so talking about communication, we have to say first that reporting is not the only way of communicating CR initiatives, especially if we are talking about SMEs. There is a need to communicate, communicate in a clear, precise, in a precise way in given times and with certain, uh, constantly. Um, actually failing having this clarity, this transparency and this timeliness could actually backfire and destroy the good intentions of CR strategies. 
Um, so taking this into account, uh, we analyzed the golden circle theory. Uh, this theory states that the key for successful communication is to begin by telling the why. So that's why <laughs> we, we think SMEs need to begin uh, by defining the why of their CR strategy, their purpose for doing CR. Uh, so they can differentiate from other initiatives of CR and also have a better how and what understanding in all stakeholders. Uh, taking this into account and the power that we have, that we know communication and, uh, and brands have, uh, we really think that sustainability can be a reality if companies use products and services as a vehicle to change to empower and to generate actions toward this global crisis that we are living. So here is a simple example of Patagonia, <laughs> uh, where <laughs> they are empowering consumers not only to uh, they are empowering consumers to reduce, to repair, to recycle before actually thinking about buying a jacket of their brand. Um, moreover, we think that when more and more people uh, became aware of the of this need and the change we need, and more companies begin doing CR the way it has to be, um, we are going to reach the tipping point. This this is the magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses some threshold, tips and spreads like wildfire. So talking about a little bit about reporting, uh, we have to say also that it is an emergence of hybrid reports that not only replicate the entire content of a CR strategy with a lot of numbers and everything, but also um, that they do online communication, create some storytelling, and give clear and attractive information. This is the importance of the message in CR communication. So here we have also an example of an that created this summary of their sustainability report uh, and they should share it in, through social media. So this allows them to talk to other uh, audiences about what they are doing. Uh, another example that I already mentioned, Colorfish, and uh, this SME has developed this program called Tuna Tunatun, uh, where they recycle cans and other packaging to the sustainable music instruments. So this allows them to create a lot of content in social media, use it in a not expensive way, and, uh, and also communicate to other stakeholders all of their initiatives related to CR. Um, another example that we think is really useful for SMEs also is to, to use the packaging as a channel to communicate CR strategies. So Fearless, that I already mentioned it also, uh, they do a lot of community investments. So what they are doing is communicating what, what, what they are working on uh, through their packaging. And each one of these bikes in here represents that, that investment they are doing. So taking all of our investigation into account, we finally come to the tool that we have developed. Um, the tool aims to actually help SMEs to identify their current stage of responsible awareness and to identify their strengths and weaknesses. Don't worry, I know you can probably not see it. This is why I will take you um, through it now in more detail. So up here, you can see five different stages of responsible awareness that we have identified. From a very basic approach on the left to being mo moving towards the most advanced on the right. Then in the rows, we have different characteristics that we think the CR strategy should consist. So up here you have the goal, and things like the issues addressed, the actions, and the communication. Um, and now we want to give you a hypothetical example so that you can understand how this tool is actually should be used. And um, here we have an example of an SME that might have, together with InfoPress or another consulting company, tried to identify their current stage of responsible awareness and what they're doing so far. So you can see here that there's not really a line, <laughs> and some of these issues are not even addressed at all because they never thought about it. And here you can see that, for example, their goal is quite advanced. So they really want to have a CR strategy, they want to address their risks. However, the actions they are taking are really basic, and also the communication tools, are, they are yeah, they're using some communication, but they're also having a very basic approach. 
And the final idea is then that step by step, um, InfoQuest or any other consulting company can move this business to a more aligned strategy as you can see here. So it's not necessary that all of these fields are in one line, but it's necessary that people are aware of what they should actually take into account in order to take benefits out of this um, concept. So in the end, we want to help them to widen their area of influence through a really solid CR strategy and through the right ways of communication. Do you remember the figures of the beginning as the significant impact that has been had? However, after living life, SMEs are not a big way, and the influence can be seen also as negative since they account for around 80% of global emissions. This is why we believe SMEs should take environmental social and environmental responsibility, and we hope our, pro our tool could help, could help them to widen their area of positive influence and, their, and limit their negative impacts. And this is why we believe in the power of tomorrow. <laughs> a group of very brave women even able to contest Einstein, so <laughs> my, my respect for that. Uh, I've got just, just two ideas to share with you. The first one is something that you mentioned, I think I did. Uh, you said communicating is much more than reporting or something like that. And I, and I do really think that accountability is, is, is like pretty far, I mean that's not to do with reporting. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with formal reporting. So I, I think that, that that's a very good idea. I was thinking while listening to you that if we cannot see when we have too much light, but we can't see when we have no light. So so it's 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 somewhere in between, of course. Yeah. So I think that that's the main idea. Something that you suggested you make me think with your presentation. So something that you suggested is that social innovation is very much about end users and human processes. And I mean, this explicit link with uh, societal needs needs to be made and clear in your presentation, so I need to comment about that. But I was just thinking that, uh, I don't know whether you share this, so it's, it's a thought, it's a question, and, and I would also like to congratulate Daniel for, for steering you in this process. But I, it's a question for you for. <laughs> you know work. It's a question for you for. Uh, and it's this idea that. My impression is that the, the traditional notion that we have of entrepreneurship is very much about people able to lead processes. My, my, my feeling is that sometimes social innovation is very much about correctly interpreting processes that are already ongoing in society. So in, in, a, sense, in a sense, social innovators are leaders and followers, yeah, and they're following previous changes in society. So I think those, those Good, uh, provoking idea from your presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That was very packed. Um, I I like very much the way you try to bring the different frameworks together. So you had really clearly done a lot of research and brought together a variety of frameworks and and updated it. And I think that's very necessary. What I would like to see more of, I have to tell you, is about the tool and the links within for press. If the idea came from them, I want to know a little bit more about who they were uh, and the idea of the tool being fit for their purpose. So maybe have, have used a very concrete example of them and you, that, that be the catalyst for the work. But well done on the amount of work that you've done and I think I, I hope you continue to develop the tool. I would love to know more about it, so I'll be reading that report. Okay, yeah, we and just had a conversation with the professor this way, because yeah, it wasn't much time before. Because we wanted to know like what kind of feedback they could give us. Because in the beginning they didn't really give us much guidance, so they didn't really say we want this or this, but they said more like, okay, the problem with a lot of SMEs is that they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and that they don't want to communicate anything because they think it's not enough or it's not good or whatever. So this is why we actually also have these steps. Um, and yeah, so we, we went to them and we asked them what they think. And they also said that it's a good tool to actually see where I is mean standing. And this is why we represent them with the different colors. Because they said, yeah, this is the best model of time that you don't know what they should take to this so, yeah. And we are yeah, looking forward to what else they, they will do with them. And if they are going to use it, now they have it. So the idea is that they begin using it maybe with them themselves, because they are an SME too. 
and also with our clients. So we are looking forward to hear about okay, some exercises with it. Uh, one, one, one question, because I see the idea. I would like to see more of the tool. What is an online tool? Is a place that you, as a little company, can you do a test and see how is your situation to start or how things. But are you thinking about, because the biggest problem for me, in the tourist sector especially, where I'm more focused, is if, if I am a little hotel in, in one tourist destination and I would like to do something, I have the problem that I have a little amount of money to do something that really impacts in the destination or somewhere else. Are you thinking about to have a main project that me as a little company, I could give you something, some money or some whatever, to, to create this huge big project and to create a good impact for, for whatever. I mean, I think this is a big problem that, that the companies have. They, they would like to do something, but as a little company, they cannot really do something that can impact. The other thing we analyze that usually SMEs are afraid of how much it will cost doing CR. That's why the tool also, not only it takes into account that, but also it, what it's trying to do is to to guide them into processes that doesn't mean that they need to invest in something. It's something that people within the company can do by themselves. So that's why, that's why the basic stage, there are things just about defining the strategy, what you're, you want to do, to see the context in which the company operates. So if, if you're talking about this hotel or this sustainable of this uh, tourism agency or, or, or whatever. Um, it's about seeing the, the business, the context in which they operate and what they need to begin the strategy and go further in it. And both of them. The idea is also that you don't, that, that is somehow empower the SME. So it's not um, something that the SME is coming to us or coming to info and saying, okay, we want you to do anything, do a project for us. But it's more to see, okay, what kind of resources do we have and what can we do with the resources to do? So it's more like knowledge sharing and seeing what can we do, what is possible, what is possible for this specific sector. Because this now is a more general tool, as you can see. It's not like focus on one sector, but it's more general. And the idea is then to actually go to, uh, get together with, with experts and then giving them ideas and also sharing um, the ideas of other SMEs. So in our plan, we probably have a lot more case studies where companies can just see, okay, what can we do, which is very basic and not very expensive, but still communicate what we do, but still doing something we have to think about. But then you help them, because you know, they have no time, yes. they have a little money, so if you help them say, okay, you have to do that and that, and there is the project that you can do it, so that will help them. pages of research behind this which is really so really if as we clicks on one of these it's actually sent to an area of the documents which it can be presented in this way that really gives them a clear explanation so even uh, someone doesn't have a clue about what do I do here you click and you get a, a very simple uh, explanation it's at over 60 pages so that's really amazing and to me the key element here is really the how a lot of SMEs would like to do something but have no idea where to start what to do so this step by step really clear process, really the key elements, which takes them back to the why. So many people say, oh, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, how do we do it? And they skip the why. So that's what I love about this project. It goes into the how, step by step, guiding you, giving you the, the tools that you need to do. But also first says, hold on a second, why are you doing this? What do you really aim to achieve? And the clarity, which is kind of outlined very quickly here, is what really struck me, together with the delivery times. It's been a dream that every time that you deliver a day, they always deliver the day before. It never happens with a team. It's always beforehand, so it's really the, the professionality of the team that really, again, ensures you could be a successful team if you decide to go forward. And again, a great pleasure to work with you guys. And on that note, I, the reason I asked him to speak first was I was just going to offer uh, Eco Odyssey's hand. 
uh, or ask for a partnership because this would actually be very helpful in the process that we are in, which is identifying and ranking um, the small, small local businesses in terms of their actions and sustainability. And actually, this would work very well because it can give you a more or less five level ranking. Uh, so, the future. <laughs> Once we have our investors, we'll be looking at what we're looking at. Actually, you can develop the problem of destination for the money that comes from the future. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone.